Hello. Today we'll be going over the particle theory of matter. So, what is the particle theory of matter? It's a way of explaining what scientists call physical changes. Physical changes. Or basically changes that don't affect what the substance is made of. Things like why water boils when you put it on a stove. Now, there are five parts to particle theory. Five parts. And I'll let Chloe take over from here. Thanks, John. So, the first main point in the particle theory is that all matter is made up of tiny particles. For example, think of the desk you sit in at school. At first, it might look like a solid object, but if we could zoom in, you could see that it's actually made up of all different little particles, just like that. And the same thing goes for if you have a liquid, like that, it's also made up of little particles, and gases. Alright, so the next big idea that we have is that a pure substance only contains one kind of particle. So then we can extend that idea to, if I have pure substance A, and pure substance B, we know that A then only contains A particles, which are going to be marked by the blue circles, and B only contains B particles, marked by the red circles. And we know this because since they're pure substances, A and B only contain one kind of particle. So now that we know this, how can we distinguish pure substances from their counterparts, mixtures? Well, one way to look at it is that a mixture, a mixture, is a combination of many pure substances. So mixture, combination of many pure substances. In this case, I've marked it as PS, pure substance. So if I have, for example, a beaker of salt water, which I'll show in purple, salt. We can figure out that salt water is made from two pure substances, salt and water. And since we know that they're pure substances, the salt only contains salt particles, while the water, only water particles. So, the next point we have is that all particles are always in motion. Now, we obviously can't see this motion, but we need to understand that it's still there. And it's one cool fact that it's the amount of motion, from just vibrating to particles flying across the room. And this determines the phase of the substance. So for solids, all we're doing is vibrating, because that's all the space it has. To liquids, a little bit more room. To gases, really, really far apart. So how do we, as scientists, change this amount of motion? We add or remove something we call energy. And the easiest way to do this is by using thermal energy. In other words, we heat up or cool down the substance. Heating adds energy. Heating adds energy with this arrow. And as a result, it increases the speed of the particles. The opposite happens when we cool down. That decreases the amount of energy. Back to our boiling water example. When we boil water, we're adding thermal energy to the water, shown by these red arrows. This increases the motion of the particles. It's the steam that we produce as a result in the end is the result of the change in temperature and thus change in energy. Our fourth point in the particle theory is that all particles in matter are separated by empty space. If the black dots are particles. The yellow background is actually the empty space, and it's effectively nothing. So an important thing to note about the empty space is that air is not empty space. Um, as we learned from the first point, air is actually a gas, and it's made up of particles. So air is a gas. Our final point in the particle theory is that all particles are attracted to each other. The strength of their attraction depends on the distance between them. For example, these two particles are relatively far away, which means they have a weak attraction. 
but if you brought them closer together, the attraction between them is much greater. For example, solids have a strong attraction, which means their particles are close together and are usually in a fixed geometric pattern. For liquids, their attractions are weaker, which allows them to move more freely than the solid particles, so the particles slip and slide among each other. And finally, for gases, they have a very weak attraction, which allows them to move freely in the space that they're given. That wraps up our lesson on particle theory. Thank you for watching. Try these questions to make sure you understand.